Kate Gallego is the mayor of Phoenix, Arizona, and the chair of the Jobs, Education, and the Workforce Committee for the Conference of Mayors. And Conference of Mayors is one of the greatest conferences of really interesting innovators in urban urban arenas that I know, and I'm really thrilled that she is here and others will be here for this forum today. She's been an advocate of transportation and micromobility in her city. She's also made sustainability a priority for her administration. Mayor Gallego, it's great to see you in person. Look, I'm fascinated by mayors because you folks are getting things done while we sit paralyzed frequently in Washington. But as you, I want our, our, our audience to understand what a mayor's world is. And as you look at your dashboard of what matters in the city and in your time there, what needles you're trying to move, tell us what some of the top three or four or big things are. Absolutely. So we are very much still fighting COVID, making sure that the city does our part in getting test kits and vaccinations out. We're also trying to take advantage of the fact that we're going through a sea change in our economy and how can we make sure Phoenix is at the leading edge of clean technology and advanced technology, particularly semiconductors, bioscience and transportation investments are happening right now. We need a lot of semiconductors right now. I mean, semiconductors are in short supply. They say that's one of the big drivers of inflation. Is Phoenix gonna solve that for us? We are planning to do our part. My biggest economic development announcement as mayor occurred at the height of COVID and it was TSMC who makes the semiconductors that go in your iPhone announcing they were gonna invest $12 billion in Phoenix. So that was a huge relief for us. We wanna be a global city and the fact that we could still have that type of global investment in our community was exciting. We have our community colleges all hands on deck getting the workforce ready as well as our university system. We have a small city right now building semiconductor fabrication in Phoenix. Everything from their own cement plant to uh, some of the largest cranes anywhere in the world. Amazing. Well, one of the other areas that, that I know is on your dashboard, you're thinking about it, because we have talked about it before, is sustainability, resilience. I mean, you have like a heat mitigation director. I think you have one of the first in the country. Uh, if I'm getting that right, you can probably counsel me on that. But as you kind of look at um, dealing with climate, dealing with how you build a, an environmentally responsible and sustainable transportation infrastructure, what are some of the big bets you're making? So we are the first city in the nation to have a permanent part of government that's in charge of heat. What we said is we have to have all hands on deck and we need a, a way to coordinate an effort to adapt to heat. We are trying to do cutting edge solutions where we have the most innovative buildings that are really thinking about heat, but also traditional tools like planting trees. Mm. Uh, we're changing the pavement in Phoenix. We have a cool pavement program that doesn't absorb as much heat. And we just, again, wanna be on the leading edge. If you're a, a company that has a solution that needs to be deployed, we want you to think of Phoenix and we have a partner to help you do that. I mean, another piece of this, which, which you and I have talked about is when you look at communities and you're trying to sort of address, I mean, we have uh, real serious problems in this country, and I'm sure Phoenix has, has an edge of this, of inequality, different opportunity for different communities. And if you get right at it, transportation options are often a very key piece of it. And I've just been looking at your transportation plan, which is pretty mammoth uh, of this. Can you run through some of the things you're looking at in public transportation and how you're gonna try and help people get to the jobs and where they're at? We are trying to build out uh, both cutting edge and some of the traditional investments. We have a light rail system and we got the first major grant of the Biden administration to expand that. It's helping us revitalize some of the shopping malls that were not doing quite as well mm. during COVID. And as soon as that infrastructure investment happened, the private sector stepped up and said, we're gonna make huge investments right along the route. We're also trying to look at electric vehicles and how we can make sure that they serve our entire population. Uh, we have a, a robust citywide effort, and, and we're actually sometimes called the Electric Valley because of the concentration of companies in the greater Phoenix area. But is there a rideshare model where electric vehicles can become more accessible to our residents? And, and how do we make sure they're ready for the jobs? Right. We have partnered also with our community college on electric vehicle So what you said is really important. So, so part of the Biden infrastructure plan money has already reached the city of Phoenix and you've already deployed that with expanded transportation options. I mean, I had not heard yet that the money had flowed, so it's very interesting to me. I mean, do you see it, um, that, that huge bill, uh, a trillion dollar bill, you know, came in basic on infrastructure, that's already helping you? So the grant we received to expand our light rail, we had applied before the, the bill passed, but we received formula funding for our airport, mm. for our transit system and other investments. For some of the most cutting edge programs, we still have to apply. And I also know that you're a, a, trans, uh, a hero of micromobility. Tell us about micromobility. Well, we are trying to make sure that you can get 
throughout our city and it's really micro mobility is a, a force multiplier for us mm -hmm. so if you can get to our light rail station and then how do we get you all the way to your destination so we're really trying to work with industry to make sure we're organized about how to deploy it and also we want to see multiple different modes there are some people for whom so like bicycling bikes. makes sense right yeah bikes and scooters and i mean i don't know all the little micro mobility options i see them kind of in i live in washington dc and i see you know scooters and different bikes electric bikes but there may be other things i don't know that are out there but you know when i'm talking to a number of these companies bird or you know uber and lyft have taken over some of them you know one of the things you hear a lot about a regulatory control you know caps on levels are you do you find yourself in a friendly position with these um, transportation options and a friendly relationship with these providers or is it tense we have a good partnership so we work with them to make sure you know where you can pick up the bicycle or the scooter and that there are certain zones uh, we have a great uh, group in our downtown that really helps coordinate that mm -hmm. as well and we're trying to map out the need and the demand they have a new focus on equity and making sure that not just the college students have access mm -hmm. to these as well, and, and we want to be leading edge on that. We're also trying to be leading edge on autonomous vehicles. If you step outside of Phoenix City Hall right now, you will see those companies right now doing extensive mapping. If you're going to come visit us for the Super Bowl in 2023, mm -hmm. it, maybe it'll be your first chance to, to arrive in an autonomous vehicle. That, that, that would be kind of cool. Let me ask you just a, a quick question about workforce, because I know that's what you're here talking the U.S. For, uh, Conference of Mayors about. And we talk a lot about it, but there's an enormous gap right now in open jobs and those people applying for them. And I've always been fascinated by you know, where our strengths and weaknesses are of taking our population and getting them into jobs. Are we providing the, you know, the, the best training options for them? Are we helping to subsidize or support that training for them? And I'd just like to know within the kind of greater Phoenix area, as you look at upskilling your citizens in a way they can afford and then get connected to job opportunities, is, is, what, what are the tangible things in that equation that matter most to you? We have, from the semiconductor industry to bioscience, these great leading edge jobs and we're working with our educational institutions to make sure people are ready for them. Mm -hmm. We've had so many companies coming into Phoenix and we want to make sure the people who already live in Phoenix can get those jobs. So we've partnered with the community college, not just to provide classes, but also if you have a transportation barrier, how can we get you there or can we go online? Uh, if daycare is a challenge, we have vouchers to support that as well. And that's been very successful. We're also learning that if we just go out into our communities, that can make it easier to break mm. down barriers. It was a big week for Phoenix. Yesterday, we won the Bloomberg Philanthropies Mayor's Challenge. We were one of 15 cities recognized wow. for our mobile career unit. Well, congratulations and so, on that. That's been a great recognition and one that I'd recommend to other cities. And what does it do, the mobile career unit does what? So we have a van that, so we started out with our COVID program doing mobile testing and then mobile vaccinations. And what we found mm. is there's a lot of people, if it's at your church parking lot or your kid's school, you're much more likely to take advantage of those services. Mm. So we repurposed one of those vehicles and started out with a mobile career unit. You can interview for a job from the van and we connect you to employers. I interviewed for a hotel job. They didn't hire me from the van, but it was great <laughs> technology, yeah. COVID safe and easy for people who, who No, it's have. so interesting. I think it's one of the really big, big, interesting gaps is where like local governments and city governments can really make a difference in connecting people. We're taking questions from the audience and we have a question for you from Noah Banayan. Noah? Hi, my name is Noah Banayan. I'm the Director of Federal Affairs for People for Bikes, the National Trade Association representing the U.S. bicycle industry. And my question is, how are mayors uh, planning to use infrastructure bill funding to build out connected, protected, active transportation networks to support an increase of biking, walking, and micromobility use. Thank you. What a great question. Mayor? Thank you, and it's very exciting for me. Bef long before I ran for office, I was uh, the chair of our advisory committee on environmental issues and helped create our first bicycle citizen effort at the city. Uh, we have developed a roadmap for our entire city, which is more than 500 square miles. And so this federal funds mm. will help us really expedite installing that infrastructure. My predecessor in the mayor's office is now in Congress, Greg Stanton, and he worked very closely with us from his position on the transportation committee to make sure that safety and mobility were part of this program. Mm. It's really unprecedented to see the Department of Transportation investing in 
safer corridors. Uh, we have so many exciting opportunities in the city. We actually have a very large canal system that delivers water. We have more miles than Venice does, and we're hoping to partner with the federal government to create bicycle corridors along that. There's something about water in a desert that really inspires people, and people just like either exercising or getting to school or work along it's, those. It's, it's definitely lifted my m mood hearing how well things are going in <laughs> Phoenix, because when you look at the last couple of years, it's been bleak for a lot of families, a lot of folks out there. Um, let me just ask you, and I, and I know Representative Greg Stanton, he's a great guy, um, and I'm just interested in both of you. When, you. when you sort of talk to your friends in the Biden administration, what do you think they most need to hear that they're not hearing? Or what do you think just finally, you know, th that if you had one more element of something to help not only your city, but other cities in ways that they might, might not be thinking about, what do you think one of that uh, one of those items might be. We are really trying to send a message from the U.S. Conference of Mayors that cities are innovation labs and that you ought to give direct funding to cities and let us see what we can do. We're hoping the energy efficiency and conservation block grants mm. that were in the last, uh, the Infrastructure and Jobs Act will really be a model because what Phoenix needs to fight climate change is different than what Washington, D.C. needs, but we're going to have that great American ingenuity and we'll come up with solution, some of which will, will spread throughout the country. So that direct partnership with cities will really get the dollars to the people. Well, thank you for sharing that. We'll make sure at least we'll do our part in helping them hear some of it. Mayor Kate Gallego of Phoenix and Chair of the Jobs, Education and Workforce Committee at the Conference of Mayors, thanks so much for joining us here and telling us about what you're doing at Phoenix. Good to be back.